Hey guys, Pokesick29 here. Welcome to episode number 37. In this episode, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to write a Votifier listener. For those of you that do not know what Votifier is, um, it is, as you can see right here, um, there is a way to, it's basically a plugin that will allow people to vote for your server, um, like uh, on Planet Minecraft or Mind Status or whatever, they can cast a vote for your server, which will give it um, give it um, credit, or it will uh, you know bump it up in the rankings. And in return, you can do different things for players, like give them items, give them permissions, um, you know, different things like that. So you're gonna want to head over to Bucket Dev and go to the Votifier page. This is uh, link will be in the description, and. Uh, you can go ahead and download a copy of Votifier. All right. And Votifier is a plugin and an API. Now, for Votifier, you're going to need a server and a uh, you're going to need an actual server. So, um, I personally use a local testing server, but Votifier, if you want to actually test it, you're going to need an actual server or port forward because um, um, MindStatus and other websites, I like MindStatus, has a Votifier test page, so you need an IP address it can access. So, for this um, video, I'm actually going to use a small server that I have from Innovation Hosting company I work for so uh, see if it'll load and uh, in the meantime we can go ahead and take the uh, uh, Votifier that we have and put it in our um, testing server plugins and get rid of the old stuff alright um so now what we're going to want to do is uh head over here and create a new project and we'll call this vlistener uh make our new package oh yeah you know what let me go ahead and undo the deleting of remote entities because NPC spawn wants it and then we'll make our V listener class now you're going to need uh, two classes in your build uh, two projects in your build path you're going to need Votifier and Bucket this is a lot like uh, remote entities in the NPC video I made um, but, uh, okay, so let's go ahead and set up our Extends Java plugin. Now, the awesome thing about Votifier is it is very, it works with the bucket um, event API. So you go ahead and make our at event handler public void on player vote. And I believe it's called a uh, Votifier event. Yeah. Uh, yes. So, this works the same as any other event. You know, you have your Votifier event. Uh, extends event, it works the exact same. Um, then within the, uh, within this, what you're going to want to do is, um, you're going to want to write vote v equals e dot get vote and import vote. Essentially, um, a vote represents is a wrapper class that represents one vote and it contains all the information um, like the address where the player voted, the service name, mind status, planet minecraft, whatever, the time, the username of the player, and then you can you know have all the set methods. Um, so let's say just for testing um, we want to broadcast it. Bucket.getServer.getPluginManager I'm oh, sorry, dot, um, oops dot broadcast message and we'll say v dot get username voted on v dot get service name and exclamation point and we'll even put this in green 
Um, so if Pogo 29 votes on Planet Minecraft, it would broadcast Pogo 29 voted on uh, Planet Minecraft. Um, some other things that you might want to do is um, you can go ahead and uh, I'll show you a few other things. Uh, you guys should be able to apply this with what you already know, but I have gotten requests from other videos asking about it, like um, other ways to apply what you've learned. So I'll show you how to go about permissions and items. So you can go ahead and say um, player p equals um, bucket dot get server dot get player v dot get username. Now. Um, the player that votes might not be online, or they might have entered, they, if they um, mistyped their username, then, you know, you could have a problem here. Um, so, again, if p equals null, then, um, you know, just return, because you're not sending any messages. But, um, if the player that voted does exist, then you can go ahead and say p dot get inventory dot add item new item stack uh, material dot gold ingot and five and you can also uh... if you want to go about permissions uh... you can say bucket dot get server the easiest way to do this is um... dot dispatch command bucket dot get server oops bucket dot get server dot get console sender and the command would be, um, do I have a permissions on here? No, I don't, but, um, let's say I use, um, permissions ex, so pex user, or px user, p dot get name, uh, what is it, add, um, my permer. Um, so then what this would do is it would broadcast username voted on whatever. It would then attempt to get the player from the username if it doesn't exist, return, um, otherwise um, add an item, and then dispatch the command for commands. You could do any command you wanted. Um, that's just an example for permissions. Now, you could also say, you could also go about saying if the player is null, you could, you could have um, like an array list of players... Uh, or offline players actually in the queue, um, and you could, and then when the player joins, if they're in the queue, then you could dispatch. So like, if someone votes but they're offline, you could have a queue of players, and then when they join, it will dispatch the commands for them. I'm not going to get into that, but you should be able to do that. Um, if you wanted to do timed commands, like you know, I think permissions already has that, but if you wanted to um, give, I can't even think of a good example, um, but if you want to do something timed, you would just use, uh, the bucket scheduler, um, and that is about it, so, uh, let's go ahead and make our, um, public void on enable, and, uh, register our events, bucket.getserver.get plugin manager dot register events, this comma, this and we're going to need to let the class implement listener. That should be good. Let's go ahead and steal the plugin.yml and quickly change it. This is a uh, v listener. Oops. This is a uh, v listener 1.0 v listener dot v listener and um, vote a fire vote. If fire, there we go, listener, and we can go ahead and export this to our testing server, and we'll call this V listener. Now uh, we're going to need to use this server. Um, yes, this is a server that I own. Yes, you can see the IP and port. Um, it will remain off pretty much forever. It's just a server that I use if I need to like make a video or do something for this company I work for but um I can go ahead and log in with FTP and go to my plugins and let me just delete all these plugins I don't need 
and then I can go ahead and upload my uh, plugin. Sorry about that. And all right, so let me go ahead and upload from my uh, desktop bucket plugin coding tutorials testing server plugins we need a uh, vodifier and the v listener so v listener and vodifier put those up there all right now we can go ahead and head back um for those of you that don't know how to use vodifier very quick tutorial uh you're going to go ahead and re start the server um we want to uh, let's see, we want to restart, and when you first restart or reload with Votifier, then, uh, alright, you're going to want to go to your files. Let's see if it shows up here. Now, so, um, to use Votifier, let's go back to our FTP. Login. And when you go to plugins, you will see your Votifier folder. So we can head over to Votifier. Um, you'll see a configuration. Um, you, I don't think that's really important. It should be set up with um, the default values that you need. Uh, then there's this listeners folder. That is if you if you can write listeners not in Java. I don't know how to do that. Not really important. Uh, this RSA folder will contain two files private and public, um, you're going to want, actually I don't even need to download it, but you're going to need both of these keys because they are what um, Votifier uses to validate. So I'm going to go ahead and um, test it out. So we need to enter the address, which is, uh, uh, it is that and 255.69. 25569 and the public key um, yes I am showing you guys the public key as soon as this video is done I'm going to delete it and generate a new one so you know um, now we have that all set up let's go ahead and actually join the server let me take this And it's two five five six nine. All right, let's give it a second. Ah, it is nighttime. So let's go ahead and test it. I'm gonna go ahead and put that over there and Minecraft over here. And if I go ahead and click test, did not work. All right. Oh yes, that's right. That sh this should work. Excuse me. All right. Votifier R S A and the public key. Let's go ahead and take our public key, put that in, and um, the address should be that. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Hmm. All right. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and figure out what is... Oh, okay. Test notification. Um, vote, test notification voted on mine status. Okay. Well, uh, it looks like the server... There we go. server was just lagging, but it did work. So, um, as you can see, it did say test notification, which I guess is the username. Um voted on mine status, which is the server name. Uh, it then did the player stuff. Of course, test notification is not a real player, so it didn't go uh, do any of the commands. But uh, that's basically it. So you guys now know how to make a Votifier listener uh, and do a bunch of different cool things with that. Um, as always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn. Um, all of the video, all of the, um, links that I use today will be in the description. So, uh, bye guys.